G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and I'm bringing back the power ranking series that I did uh, all through last year, about every five rounds. I'd have a crack at ranking the AFL teams in the order, I guess, of which we rate them. Then they're sort of form rankings, but they're meant to sort of reflect genuinely how I feel each team is ranked in the competition based on what we've seen so far, but also factoring in uh, some other variables like last year, their fixture, how badly they've been struck by injuries and COVID, uh, etc. And this year, uh, as you can imagine, it's a little bit harder than others with um, some teams in particular who have been ravaged by COVID and injury, etc. So in this video, essentially what I'm going to be doing is ranking the 18 teams from first to 18th based on how much I rate them. Obviously, there's not much value in just doing a 1 to 18 ranking based on the first five rounds because that's what the ladder is for. So this is going to look a little bit different to what the ladder currently suggests after five rounds. I will make a disclaimer though, uh, at the moment I'm recording this before Hawthorne plays Geelong in the Easter Monday game. So unfortunately, there's incomplete data. Geelong and Hawthorne will have played one less game than every other team here. So it's not ideal, but frankly, it's just got to sort of line up with my schedule and the ability to make these videos. So I hope you guys understand. It's been an interesting first five rounds in the sense that, you know, there's there's always surprises. Obviously, we, we always expect surprises if we anticipate them. Trying to predict which surprises will occur will uh, obviously be just about impossible to predict. So, like I said, I'm going to try and wait, you know, last year's finish and, and how teams fared last year into it a little bit because it's still relevant this early in the season. And I'm going to give it a crack. It's a tough job. So, bear with me if I rate your team a little bit lower than you would have. Before we get into it, guys, thank you so much for all the people who have jumped on, which has ticked over 18,500 subscribers. It would be great if you could consider subscribing. It does say 42% of you who watch my videos haven't actually hit subscribe. So if you are enjoying the content, it would mean a lot to me and it would help me grow the channel. So thank you. But anyway, that's enough waffle for now. I've decided to start from the top. Uh, sometimes I start from the bottom, but I think everyone knows who the top team is going to be uh, in this particular ranking. I'm going to go with last year's reigning premiers. we got the Melbourne Footy Club who sit first. They were premiers last year, obviously, and they currently sit 5-0, and so I really haven't put a foot wrong. They've beaten the Bulldogs, Gold Coast Suns, Port Adelaide, GWS, and Essendon so far this year and haven't really looked too troubled. Four of those teams were finalists last year, but we have to also consider that they've uh, kind of all started the year poorly when you look at Essendon, GWS, Port, and the the Bulldogs. They haven't had ideal starts of the year, but can't really hold that against Melbourne. And they've got that proven record of being able to, uh, you know, go deep in September and obviously win the whole thing. So I can't imagine there's too many arguments. Melbourne are the number one ranked team. The second best team in the comp, in my opinion, is the Brisbane Lions, a team who's consistently been around the mark since 2019. Last year, they finished fourth, eliminated in a semi-final, and they currently sit third on the ladder with their wins coming against Port Adelaide, North Melbourne, Essendon, and Collingwood, and their one loss to the Cats at GMHBA Stadium. Been a pretty par for the course start to the year for the Brisbane Lions. I think uh, most people expected them to win the games they did, and Geelong down at GMHBA is a tough ask for any travelling team, as I, I so often say. But it's true, so I can't really hold that against them too much. And they've looked convincing. 108-point victory against North Melbourne in particular. They're getting the job done. So for me, they are the number two team. The third best team in the comp right now, in my opinion, has got to be the Sydney Swans, who last year finished sixth and currently sit fifth on the AFL ladder with their wings coming against GWS, Geelong, North Melbourne, and West Coast with just one loss at Marvel Stadium to the Western Bulldogs. So again, playing against a team who were runners-up last year, that loss for me is understandable and probably one you'd peg them to perhaps drop at the start of the season. They've looked pretty much as good as you'd expect them to this year. Obviously, uh, beating GWS and North uh, isn't too hard at the moment, and West Coast haven't been much better, but the fact that they really put those teams to the sword in particular was really, really impressive. Well, I'm really talking about West Coast there, but uh, if you watch the game, they were fantastic without Buddy Franklin. So Survived a bit of a blip on the radar against North Melbourne. They managed to pull off an 11-point victory, but for me, Sydney have looked pretty consistently good this year and are my third best team to come. In fourth spot, and perhaps with a little asterisk against them, we've got Geelong, uh, who last year finished third and are now seventh on the ladder. The asterisk is only because they've played one less game. So if they get annihilated by Hawthorne, will that impact their ranking? Probably not, to be honest, considering the other teams around them, but we'll get to that later. They've won against the Lions, Pies, and Essendon so far this year, with one loss coming against the Swans by five goals in the game. Buddy Franklin kicked 1,000 goals. Again, tough fixture, not really a bad loss by any stretch, and the Lions are a good side, and the Pies have played some pretty good footy this year as well. Again, it's one of those years where people who expected Geelong to decline, but from everything that I've seen so far, they're still around the mark for that top four range. So I've got them as the fourth best team in the comp right now. In fifth spot, 
I potentially controversially have picked the Western Bulldogs who last year runners up and it's perhaps controversial because they currently sit 10th on the ladder with just two wins and three losses. Their two wins were against Sydney and North Melbourne and their losses were against Melbourne, Carlton and Richmond. It hasn't been smooth sailing for the dogs so far this year. Some disappointing losses, uh, and particularly that game against Richmond, I don't think was a fair reflection of how good the Bulldogs are. Carlton have played some really good footy, so can understand a loss there. This one is still factoring in, you know, last year's performance. Obviously, if you're just looking at the performance from five rounds, you don't have them better than some of the teams I've got below them. But to me, they're a proven finals quality side and and uh, against North Melbourne, I feel like they might have built some momentum. So as it sits, I still think they're more of a threat to the Premiership than the teams I'm going to name below them. So that's my justification for the Bulldogs still being the fifth best team to come. Now, after the top five for me, this is where uh, there's a little bit more grey area. But I've actually got St Kilda here, who last year finished 10th and are currently 4th on the AFL ladder. Their year started with uh, not a great loss to Collingwood in round one. But again, Collingwood played some good footy and uh, St Kilda just didn't have a four-quarter performance in them. But since then, they've gone on to beat Fremantle in Perth. They smashed Richmond, they smashed Hawthorne, and they beat the Gold Coast Suns on the weekend. So really building nicely and starting to return potentially to that 2020 form, which saw them uh, go all the way to win a final. To be sitting 4-1 and one is a good effort at the moment, and uh, I think they've really gotten some growth, uh, particularly in the forward half, it, their options and avenues to goal. If you watch my videos, you've seen I've been banging on a lot about uh, the way they can score. So despite that round one loss, uh, they've been consistently pretty good since then, and uh, unlike some of the teams I'm going to have below them, they haven't really really blipped too much since that round one game. It's looking pretty good at St Kilda, to be honest. They're my sixth best team. In seventh spot, I've got Carlton, who last year finished 13th and are currently sixth on the AFL ladder. And a few weeks ago, we were talking about them as a potential top four team. But again, just need to iron out a few kinks for me to really elevate into that top four bracket. They've beaten Richmond this year, beat the Bulldogs in a really good performance, and then some had some, I guess you could say, unconvincing wins over Hawthorne and Port, where they got massive leads and almost lost them. They beat Port by three points and they beat Hawthorne by a single point. Their one loss this year was a disappointing game against the Gold Coast Suns where they went down by five goals. So for me, still very up and down. I think their top tier of football, which they've displayed numerous times this year, is uh, is top four worthy. But uh, it's it's all the other stuff we're seeing, you know, in the half where they lose a 50-point lead to Port Adelaide and only win in the dying stages of that game. And, you know, Hawthorne was a similar story. Until they nut that out, I don't think I can put them ahead of teams like St Kilda, who I think Carlton have played better than this year, but they've also played a lot worse than. So for me, Carlton is just my seventh best team in the comp. Scraping into the top eight of my teams on quality, I've got Fremantle, who last year finished 11th and currently sit second on the AFL ladder with wins over Essendon, GWS, West Coast and Adelaide, and their one loss coming at home against St Kilda. So if I had to offer a sort of a caveat against Fremantle, I don't think they've had the toughest fixture yet so far, but I think we've seen some genuine growth out of that team. First two rounds weren't wholly convincing. You know, Adelaide reined in a, a big deficit to almost pinch the game, and Fremantle just hung on, and then I thought they were quite poor against St Kilda. But since then, uh, particularly in the second half of the derby, they really started to find some confidence and momentum. And in the last quarter against GWS, again, it took them all the way to the last quarter to really put their dominance on the scoreboard. For the Essendon games where it's clicked, obviously having Tabra in the side um, and when he kicked seven goals as well, uh, that's, a, that's a handy inclusion. So Fremantle, I think, are a top eight side on quality. They just need to find uh, consistent avenues to goals because that has been a, uh, it's been a problem for them. But for me, they're a top eight side. In ninth spot, I've got Collingwood, who last year finished 17th and currently sit eighth on the AFL ladder, which is uh, very good going. Their two wins have been against St Kilda and Adelaide, and they've had three losses against Geelong, West Coast, and Brisbane. So a bit of a mixed bag of results there. St Kilda have been fairly good this year and it was definitely a good win and they look far too good for Adelaide. In their two losses they were very very good against Geelong and uh, conceded a 37 point lead to ultimately lose the game and then Brisbane they did very well at the Gabba in my opinion. The one question mark was their loss over West Coast to be honest uh, and obviously we know the situation with West Coast at the moment they pulled out a really good performance out of the bag to, uh, to beat Collingwood, who weren't terrible that game. It just took a big effort by the Eagles to get over the line. So it's a tough one. You could make a, a pretty solid case that Collingwood should be higher than Fremantle, I guess. But what's probably held them back is just that faltering against West Coast. That's probably the, the, the line splitter that I've got between Collingwood and Fremantle. Next, we have Hawthorne, uh, who last year finished 14th and are currently 9th on the AFL ladder. And again, a little asterisk on this particular team because they haven't played yet. So if they knock off Geelong today, that will influence my rankings. But like I said, 
can't do a video tomorrow. So they've had a pretty mixed bag of uh, performances this year with uh, wins over North Melbourne and the power, and they've lost to Carlton and St Kilda, albeit quite heavily against St Kilda by 69 points. So we, and I in particular, we're talking about Hawthorne for the quality of football they've displayed at times this year has been very good in my opinion. In particular, that uh, 64 point win over the power in Adelaide. But when you look at it in context now, North and the power are probably two of the weaker teams in the comp right now. So when you add in a big, big loss to St Kilda, which is quite disappointing, uh, that's definitely dropped Hawthorne down in the rankings, but they're a young side. They're going to be up and down. So uh, for me, it's a wait and see on exactly where they sit in the comp. But I think probably mid-table with their level of consistency is about right. Next, we have Richmond, who uh, last year finished 12th on the ladder and are currently sitting 11th. And that's roughly where I've ranked them as well. They've beaten GWS and they've beaten the Bulldogs this year. That win over the Bulldogs in particular really shows that Richmond still have some quality in there. They just uh, aren't showing up week to week at the moment, which uh, must be frustrating for their fans. They lost in round one to Carlton after leading in the final quarter. They lost to St Kilda by five goals and disappointingly went down by about 19 points to Adelaide on the weekend. So for me, I think Richmond are a frustrating team to really peg. I think they're going to have games where they beat teams you don't expect and then lose uh, to teams you don't expect as well. So I don't really know where they sit, but I think mid-table is about right. Just below them, we've got the team that beat them on the weekend, the Adelaide Crows, who last year finished 15th. Uh, and now currently sitting 13th on the ladder. And it's been a pretty good start to the year for a rebuilding side, in my opinion, for the Adelaide Crows. Their two wins came against uh, Richmond, which is probably their best win of the season so far. And of course, their arch rivals, Port Adelaide, after the siren at Adelaide Oval. Their three losses have been a narrow loss to Essendon, a narrow loss to Fremantle, and then a 45-point loss to Collingwood. So two very narrow losses in there. And they're probably, maybe, dare I say it, a Tex Walker away from being 4-1. and one. Obviously, he was unavailable for the start of the year. And when he's in that team, they really have a different dynamic. I think you could make a case for Adelaide being higher than this, to be honest. I think their performances have been pretty solid. And I wouldn't be surprised if they sort of climb their way up the ladder. But again, this is probably me factoring and waiting in last year's ladder position into this year's. I need Adelaide to prove it to me before I can really rise them up the rankings, but they are a very tough team to beat at the moment. Next, I've got the Gold Coast Suns, who last year finished 16th and are currently 12th on the ladder with two wins and three losses. Their two wins were against West Coast in Perth and Carlton at Metricon, and they've lost to the Demons, Giants, and the Saints. So this is a tough one. I I don't have any confidence that Gold Coast is going to last the whole season as they've notoriously been bad for over the previous years. So at the moment, I think my ranking on them is fairly generous. I, I think they've earned it. They were fairly good in Perth against the Eagles, albeit against, you know, not much better than a waffle side. And then uh, a big win over Carlton is really what's uh, elevated them for me. Losing to the Demons and the Saints at the moment isn't too bad at going as well. So other than their loss to the Giants, who I think have been incredibly poor this year, I think it's been an acceptable start for the Suns. And uh, as such, I rate them over some of the other, you know, poorly performing teams this year. That being said, I don't really have much confidence that they're going to rise higher than this on my rankings the next time I do this video. Next, I've got West Coast. And again, this one is contentious. And I do want to put a fat asterisk on this because I just don't think you can really get a good read on West Coast at the moment. Last year, they finished ninth. They currently sit 16th on the ladder. Four of the five weeks that they've played this year have uh, have been with a team that isn't really a reflection of uh, of the, the best 22, or it's not even resembling it. Um, I think at least once, maybe twice, we had to dip into top-up players, at least to fill out the emergency bench. So their one win against Collingwood uh, was the bright spark where you really saw a, a new system come to play and, and some fringe players really step up and, and play a good role. So their losses to Fremantle, North Melbourne and the Suns, again, I don't know how much you can read into it. I, I genuinely think that uh, they probably would have beaten North and the Suns had we had those players back into that team. Fremantle may be a little bit more questionable. The thing that throws that all out of whack is that when some good players have come back into the side, Sydney have absolutely annihilated West Coast at Perth. But again, it's still one game, right? Sydney have a habit of annihilating West Coast. I think it's still too early to make a call. I, I believe that West Coast has the quality above the teams that I'm going to rate below them, as you'll see. A lot of underdone players in the side right now. I'm not trying to use it as an excuse. I just genuinely don't think we know yet. That being said, they were incredibly poor at the end of last year, so I'm certainly not rating them any higher than this. Below that, perhaps controversially, I've got Essendon, who last year finished 8th and currently sit 15th on the ladder. And uh, again, one of the more disappointing teams of the season so far, and there's been quite a few, but I don't think Essendon are playing up to the, the standard that they set for themselves last year. Their one win this year has been a 4 
or five point win over Adelaide, and they lost to Geelong, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Fremantle. Now, admittedly, that's a pretty tough fixture, to be honest. They got annihilated by Geelong and beaten fairly comfortably by Brisbane and Melbourne, and then again, pretty much touched up by Fremantle. So, not really looking too far close to the mark, to be honest, even though it's been a tough fixture. Again, you could say you probably rate Essendon higher than West Coast, and to be honest, I don't really have a strong argument against that, but I think West Coast has a bit more of an excuse for their poor form than Essendon do at the moment. Perhaps Essendon will overtake them by the time I next do this video. In third last, I've got the GWS Giants. Again, another really disappointing team from this season who last year finished seventh and actually won a final. They're currently 14th on the ladder, and their one victory this year has been against the Gold Coast Suns over in Sydney. Their losses have been against Sydney, Richmond, Fremantle, and Melbourne. So again, not the simplest fixture, but I don't think they really look too close to the mark at all this year. They were competitive against Sydney. They weren't great against Richmond. That was a really poor performance. Against Fremantle, I think a team of GWS's caliber should at least be staying in that game. And frankly, Fremantle proved to be the much better side and then annihilated by Melbourne. And I know that Melbourne are a very, very good team, but it wasn't the most courageous performance in the face of a very good team. So again, you could make a case GWS you think are better than West Coast, you think a better Essendon. I am receptive to those arguments, but again, I think there's just an asterisk on the Eagles, so you can shuffle those teams however you like. Now we're up to our bottom two, and I'm sorry to say it, that I've got to put Port Adelaide in my bottom two, who last year finished second and are currently 18th on the ladder, the only winless team. They've lost to Brisbane, they've lost to Hawthorne, they've lost to Adelaide, Melbourne, and Carlton. So a mixed bag of results there. Some of those teams are good, some of them are not. Possibly their best performance was in round one against Brisbane, where they uh, more or less pushed them all the way, and then against Carlton, admittedly, they came back strong, but the injury situation doesn't explain the, the real drop-off in, I think, confidence and endeavour from Port Adelaide we've seen this year. And admittedly, I've got them higher than North Melbourne because pretty much only think North Melbourne have a victory because they came against uh, the Eagles' weakened waffle side. So despite the fact that they finished second last year, I'm not weighting that too heavily into this rating because I think we've seen enough from Port Adelaide to know something is truly rotten. And finally, the 18th ranked side in the competition who finished 18th last year and is now 17th is North Melbourne. They've had one victory this year against the West Coast Eagles. Again, not a wholly convincing performance. It wasn't a good game. I don't even think West Coast played that well. I think there was a bit of a media narrative that uh, that we were brave in the in the face of adversity and admittedly the, the effort was good but there were times where North Melbourne had the opportunity to just kill us. They'd have five players on the overlap and they would still keep the ball out of bounds. It was just one of those games. Their losses have been against Hawthorne, the Lions admittedly by 108 points, against Sydney by 11 points and the Dogs by 68 points. So other than that one performance against Sydney where they nearly beat a very, very good team away, to me, they haven't really looked to improve at all this season. And a 108 point loss and a 68 point loss really speaks to that regression. So unsurprisingly, the 18th ranked side from last year is still, in my opinion, the worst team in the comp. That being said, not trying to heap shit on North. They are going through a uh, an arduous rebuild process. And the fact that they haven't necessarily improved greatly in the first five rounds of this year, I don't think is a big deal. They've had some injuries as well. Uh, to some important players like Taron Thomas, LDU, those guys missing football uh, at, at crucial periods has uh, probably cost them a little bit, but uh, they, they've kind of plateaued a little bit. So we'll see how much they improve over the course of the season. But that's it, guys. That is my 18 teams uh, ranked from best to worst based on basically how much I rate them. I'm sure well, there'll be plenty of discussion uh, about how you agree or disagree with my rankings. Uh, some of it was really tough. And again, got a few teams in there that uh, it's it's hard to really make an accurate call on. But as always, guys, if you are enjoying the content, I would appreciate you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you stay tuned for content coming up in the near future, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.